This league right here is a special honor. You see a lot of guys in the majors now that have played in this league. Knowing that you're right, you're right there. You know, it could happen at any point where the, the D-backs say, hey Coop, you're ready, like, let's go. This is the future of Major League Baseball, right? All the superstars that you see in the game have played in this, in this league and they're on their way. That's, that's all, I guess, the best way to put it. You know, you always hear the Arizona Fall League, you know, it's where all the best of the best come to the minor leagues to play. You know, you got all the top prospects here. Everyone that's here right now is here for a reason. Everyone's got their own path to the, to the show. Everyone's got to take their own steps, and I'm glad this is one of mine. The guys that you see here, you're going to see in the big leagues. And if you feel like you can go out here and have success, you feel like, man, I'm not that far away from being in the big leagues and being ready. Fall League is kind of a proving ground for top prospects, you know, this is where every team in the big league sends their, their top guys, position players and pitchers, and you play for five or six weeks in an uh, atmosphere where you're just being evaluated every day. You know, you have every uh, executive, scout, baseball person in the stands every night, and it's, it's a real chance to see how guys stack up, and a majority of these guys end up playing in the big leagues, and a lot of them end up being really good big leaguers. Yeah, they, these guys are right there. Um, it's kind of like, play well here, and you're you're, you know, you're really well thought of in the organization of, of uh, he's ready to go in the big league. You look at guys that had good years, guys that need extra at bats or have innings left, and guys that you want to see against, you know, some upper level competition. So the guys that we picked this year all kind of fit the, that criteria. Dominic Canzone put himself on the map this year, had a really big offensive year, started out slow with some injuries, but uh, really came on in the second half and went to double A and did even better there. So he's a guy that uh, can play multiple positions in the outfield and offensively he profiles as a guy that's gonna be a hit for some average and power. This guy has uh, like unbelievable ability to barrel the ball. He, he, he can hit a ball off his shoelaces, he can hit a ball off his eyes and he can square it up. He had a, a really great year this year, um, high A, double A, probably if it wasn't for Alec Thomas would have been our minor league position player of the year. Right after I came back from injury in uh, Hillsboro, I was really struggling and uh, I was just grinding with my coach, uh, Casey Judge in Hillsboro. And one of the big mechanical changes with my swing was um, I needed to get the ball more in the air because I was hitting the ball hard in Hillsboro, but it was more just on the ground and it really wasn't doing any damage. So the big thing mechanically was a higher finish just to get the uh, ball in the air more, and hit more doubles and homers, and just uh, raise my OPS more than anything. To be honest, it doesn't really matter to me if I'm on people's radars or not. Uh, I never really have been. It was more just for myself knowing that I could compete at the highest level uh, in AA this year, believing in myself that I can do it. And once it happened, I was just, I was again, just happy that I was able to make some adjustments. It's a really great system. Yeah, we do have a lot of great outfielders. Corbin Carroll, Alec Thomas, Dom Fletcher, uh, Jake McCarthy, all great players. Been working on some flexibility at first too. So uh, there's different things that I can do. Um, obviously just keep the back going. And then uh, it's just been really great to kind of also learn from even like younger guys like Corbin, kind of like what they do, uh, what helps them. So it's, it's really good that all of us can kind of play together at some point and then learn from each guy and try to put it into your own game. I mean, we got a really great group of guys. Everybody's super laid back. We're working hard. I'm glad we're all doing it together. Uh, it's, it's a grind, but at the same time, we're, we're learning a lot. And again, the experience is really good for me. Ooh, that's the hardest piece of gum I've ever seen in my life. Oh, dude, what is he? Dude, no, dude, these are from like 2015. There's no way. These things are like little bricks. How many uh, pieces of bubble gum you think you can put in your mouth? You can't just be wide open, just like, oh. Uh. Probably 11. You think 11? 11 pieces of gum. I want to see this. He's not going to do it today. Today's not that day. Today's not that day. Dude, hey. he's, he's, so he's, he's, he's just not that guy. No, not that guy. He's not, he's not that guy. I, I just like to nibble on a piece for about, you know, about 15 chews. That's all it's good for. You got to go like seven and a half on the right side, or then seven and a half on the left side, and you got to spit it out. Yeah, see, done. No more flavor. We can't sit in here, man. Hey, did you get that itch figured out? Why can't we sit in here? 
I, don't know, I, just, I just thought we were a little bit more strong-willed than that. Mr. Big Time. What happened to your prospect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy. This guy. Unbelievable. All right, Holdy, I guess me and you are the only two that are built different. We gotta sit out here. Stump a daddy. <clears throat> All right, hey, you gotta toss it from behind the rubber, though. All right, behind the rubber. The plate yeah, we're trying to land it on the plate. Walls are out, though. That's gonna be short. <laughs> At least I'm in place. It's gonna be short. Ah, unbelievable. Oh, that might, uh... That might be OB. OB. Stumps out. Off the wall. Oh boy, Tobot. So what's going on in this game? I think so. Yeah, I haven't even looked at one pitch yet. What are we doing? I mean, this is beautiful. We don't get this out in Alabama. It's either too hot to go outside or, it's, or the wind chill is so bad, you just don't even want to do nothing. Yeah, we have seven relievers today. This is a no-hitter. Huh? Do a combined no-hitter. A little, a, little, a little staff no-hit day? I'm all, I'm all for it. Except we just talked about it, so it's not going to happen. What you know about that cornbread stump? Southern fried chicken. That's just part of my heritage, man, being from down south. Y'all have something fried every now and again. He's in there. Oh, yeah, we're running. We're scoring him. We're sending him. Dom, invest in a, invest in a parachute. Looks like he needs to take a poop. Who, hey, Dom? Looks like he's running through water, dude. Dom! Pick your legs up. He's just looking at us like, oh my gosh, I hate all of you. Oh, wear that. I feel like that's one of the most like common things said in baseball is where, but everybody knows whenever you're hitting, you're, you hear that, you, know, you want to look back and be like, well, how about you come in here and wear 97 off the ribs? Stuff out, your pants look like they're painted on. It's a good pant. It's a good pant. Top, top five glasses of water I've ever had in my life. Easy, top five. Keegan Curtis is a, a guy that we acquired you know, about midway through the year, and he shows big stuff uh, as a reliever. Somebody that's got the profile of somebody who's going to be able to pitch late innings in, in major league game. Nice mix of pitches, slider, curveball, and a changeup. He can be a, a big league reliever I, I, in the near future for us. I like I like the ability how he attacks the hitters and uh, pitches off that you know fastball slider, and so he's got the sharp breaking ball along with it. We were on the road, got a phone call from Kevin Reese, told me that he had some interesting news for me, and I was like, oh gosh, am I, you know, am I getting canned? And he eventually told me, you know, I'd been traded for Tim McCastro, and that I would be an Arizona Diamondback starting as of that, that day. The mindset would be, obviously, you know, the Diamondbacks saw something in me that they liked. Taking everything that I've learned coming up through the Yankees organization and bringing it over here, that helped me mold myself into who I was, who I am. I like to ask questions, pick brains. In this game, everything's, you know, so individualized. Let's say one thing that Mitchell Stumpo is doing, it might actually work for me or it might not. But it's always worth to give those things a try to see if maybe it clicks and works for me. Stumpo is a great story, Cinderella story. You know, this guy was independent sign and he touched every level, including the Fall League this year. Signed uh, out of a, a tryout camp, went three levels this year, just, just dominated pretty much everywhere he pitched, uh, all the way up to AAA. I had been doing a bunch of post-draft things, uh, trying to get picked up. I'd come from Division Three baseball. Numbers weren't good in D3. I was, doing, I was a two-way there. My dad had actually had dragged me down to St. Petersburg, Florida promised I'd play golf and that stuff if it didn't work out, but ended up being one of the greatest things that ever happened to me, Cash B. Champ. Um, he's the one that discovered me. He was an independent scout for the D-backs. Uh, great, great guy. He gave me the shot. He called his boss, Chris Carmanucci, that day at the camp, and he was able to sign me that same day. Me and Josh talked in spring training, and that was just a conversation that I knew I was going to have to earn it from the get-go. Well, it's kind of embarrassing looking back. I told him, you know, you're going to have to come out here and compete and make a team. You know, nothing's going to be given and you're kind of on the, uh, you're, you're kind of on the, uh, the tipping point right now. You need to go out and have a good spring training and a good outing every time because you're always being evaluated. From then, it was really just a matter of focus each and every time I go out there. I knew that I was 25 in low A 
and I needed to move fast and I needed to move efficiently. Just staying focused on every outing, knowing that it's important each one that can show the organization something to move me up. Been about three and a half weeks in Visalia. Got up to high A and spent three weeks there. And once I got the double A, I didn't want to stop at that point because I knew it was possible. And when I got the triple A, it was just a really great way to cap off the year as well as the fall league. Got a bright future. I think he's going to pitch in the big leagues for a long time. He's, he's got a nasty slider. He's, he's, he's looked really, really good in this uh, fall league. I don't think anybody saw this coming. We knew he was talented, but we didn't realize he'd be able to move this fast. And he's put himself on the map now with his uh, good fastball and, and really good cutter. He's a great story, and that's why baseball is so, so awesome. You just never know where the next guy might come from. You on the mic? Oh, yeah, I'm on the mic. You mic'd up? Mic'd up today. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do they know you know Mike Trout? Man, you're probably the 10th guy I said that already. <laughs>